we continue to celebrate our biggest feast day. In fact, Easter never ends, even though the whole world is under quarantine. And hopefully, the worldwide quarantine didn't prevent you from really celebrating Easter with your whole family. Your family is your first love and your first responsibility. The one of the most interesting encounters of Jesus with his disciples after the resurrection involved the Apostle Thomas. And it's one that gave him a dubious title of Doubting Thomas. Now, I don't, it's not fair to be so tough on Thomas. He was a good man, a good apostle, a good disciple, good follower of Jesus, all of the above. We, we remember just the, the, the one time when he just doubted, no matter how often the disciples insisted, we have seen the Lord. He is alive. And Thomas says, no, 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 no. I will never believe unless I could put my finger into the nail marks in his hands and in his feet and put my whole fist into the open wound caused by the soldier's lance. Unless I can do that, I will never believe. And then Jesus, of course, comes and visits with all of them again. Thomas is with them. And this time he says, hey, Thomas, come here. Do what you want to do. And then don't be unbelieving, but believe. And, and the thing is, that is how Thomas came to give the best expression of faith in the resurrected Christ that ever was when he said, my Lord and my God. When, when Jesus finally made his move to Jerusalem to give his life for us, the St. Thomas showed his courage when he invited his fellow disciples, let us go with him and die with him. Not too many people remember this moment of courage on his part, but they seem never to able to forget that he doubted. And Thomas, as I said before, is one of the good guys. And we could learn a lot about our faith because of him. Faith doesn't stop us from having doubts or questions. Faith also allows us to wonder whether God is truly with us and faithful to his promises. Most of us have had moments when God seemed to be so distant and unresponsive. We get sick or a loved one gets sick. We pray and it doesn't seem like our prayer is answered. We lose our jobs and pray for another one, somehow to be able to support our families. Our house burns to the ground, a loved one dies. And we wonder, where did God go? True faith is not always clear to us. And often it is a real challenge Faith does not rely on proof. It is a matter of trusting. And we can thank our parents and the church, I certainly can, for planting the seed of faith in my life. And most important of all, faith is not a private matter, something between God and me. Faith is a gift that's always shared. All you have to do is go to the Acts of the Apostles and you see how quickly the church grew in numbers. Why? Because they had a real deep faith in the Lord Jesus in his resurrection. 
So that's really why they had the deepest convictions. And, and the church people saw this in their lives and wanted some for, that, for themselves. And that's how they came on board and became Christians themselves and were willing to give their lives. And many did. Faith is not simply saying yes to all the doctrines of the church that we hear and are taught over our whole lifetime. In the beginning of Christianity, you know, there, there was no Apostles' Creed. There was no Nicene Creed. The ones we, the words, the prayer we prayerfully say uh, uh, every Sunday. All of this was never there. It was never there. It was not part of their lives. And so, in the, in the, that, well, Thomas had, for example, had no idea that there were two natures in Jesus, that he was truly God and truly human. And also, he couldn't possibly know that there are three persons in one God unless it was revealed to him by that same Jesus, by God. And that's it. God tells us things, and we need to believe that because God cannot commit a sin, and lying would be a sin. So he can lie. Whatever he says is true, and we need to accept it, you and I, whether we understand it or not. That's that's not a give that's not a given. In other words, we 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 just accept it as true because of the person we trust that's telling us the truth. But Thomas is the one that teaches us that we must first believe in Jesus, in God. Believe in God before we accept all the other teachings of the church. That's a that has to be the first thing. You believe in the person of God. Thomas had no idea about the Eucharist either. Complete knowledge. I mean, that it, how bread and wine is changed into the body and blood of Christ. I mean, how could he possibly know that? Jesus is the one who said, this is my body, this is my blood. And he believed Jesus. And that's the way our faith is. We can thank Thomas for all that. It's a complete surrender to the risen Christ as our Lord and our God. And the bottom line, Thomas teaches us that we believe because we know God, Jesus, loves us. We believe in the person who loves us. Now, we are not told if Thomas put his fingers in the wounds of Jesus or touched his side and put his hand or fist into it. No, Jesus invited him to do so. But that is how Jesus invited him to come to believe. And he says, and stop being disbelieving. Believe. Just take, check me out. And that's what he did. He gave him that chance. Well, we are invited also to believe in him because of his love for us. And that's what really drove Thomas. He lived his faith and he died for his faith. Now, Jesus invites you and me to touch him and to believe in him. He is the very same risen Jesus that Thomas encountered, and he is always with us. May God bless you and your loved ones.